we're going to walk through the garden and check out all of the beautiful hardy hydrangeas. Hi, I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings and stick with me. We are going to talk about just the different stages that the hydrangeas are currently at. Do they bloom on old or new growth? And does the hydrangea make a good cut flower for winter containers? Let's go take a walk through the garden and check out all of the beautiful blooms. We're going to be seeing a lot of hydrangeas in my garden. The first one we're going to start off with is the Bobo hydrangea. These are planted westward facing on the front of my house and they're about three foot tall and three foot wide. This here is a grouping of three plants and I think the thing we'll find interesting as we walk through the garden is just to see the difference in height in these plants as well as the difference in where they're at as far as how many blooms are happening. These here just started blooming and are looking really nice. They're going to be probably in color for another probably six weeks or so and then they're going to kind of take on that dusty pinkish coloration in the garden. So hydrangeas are a really great plant with just a lot of longevity. The bobo hydrangeas are part of the hardy hydrangea family or panicle hydrangea family. They bloom off of the new growth and are very reliable bloomers. So if you have hydrangeas and they don't bloom well for you, these are definitely something that's going to do a fabulous job. Here's another grouping of three bobo hydrangeas and these are more westward facing. The plants are about the same size, but you can see that they're a little bit further along in their flowers, uh, flower cycle, a lot more blooms right now and they really are looking fabulous. One thing to point out with the bobo hydrangeas is the little florets on each of the flowers are a little bit smaller than some of the other hardy hydrangeas. Really a beautiful flower, um, but one thing I have noticed is when I've tried to do drying of the bobo hydrangeas, they really don't dry quite as well as some of the others. And I think it's because the florets are just a little bit more dainty and personally they just don't dry as well. So these are going to turn pink as the summer continues on. Um, but right now they're really beautiful in their prime white coloration. This beautiful hydrangea is the Hydrangea Quickfire. This is the earliest hydrangea in my garden to bloom. Quickfire is about eight foot tall and about eight foot wide. And you can see this is well past its prime, but holding on to its color really well. It's really pretty there next to the bobo. You can see the color contrast. So this is more of a lace cap type hydrangea. You can see it doesn't have the really big full blooms on it. Not that that's needed for a plant to be beautiful. It's just a different flower form. And even though this doesn't have the big huge full flowers, it really puts on a very vibrant show of color with a bright magenta to dusty rose pink blooms. Isn't that just a beauty in the garden? Making our way through the garden, the next hydrangea we come across, this is a limelight hydrangea. And this one has been in the garden for, gal, probably, I'm gonna say 20-ish years. Um, this one here is next to an air conditioner, so it's kind of covering up the air conditioner a little bit. So this one we do have to trim back often just to kind of keep the flowers off the air conditioning unit uh, so that the air conditioner can breathe properly. This is a very dry part of the garden south facing. Uh, we do have drip that runs through it, but it still does tend to be a little bit more on the dry side. So we'll often find with this hydrangea that it's a little bit ahead of schedule just due to the dryness. The dryness kind of forces it um, into its fall colors and I'm going to say dormancy, but I don't really mean dormancy, but it just, it just makes the hydrangea progress along faster because it's not getting as much water. Right now though, it's looking really great. Continuing down, uh, we have a few of our arborescent hydrangeas. Uh, these were prime in the end of June, beginning of July. This is the Incredible Blush. It is not any color right now. So these are all the spent blooms. Uh, but even so, the spent blooms do add some nice interest into the garden. So we don't really trim them off. Uh, we certainly could trim them off, but for now we're just leaving them because they do add a little texture and interest into the garden. Here we have the Limata hydrangea. These are part of the arborescence family or the smooth hydrangea family. These were in their prime back the end of June, beginning of July with beautiful white blooms. And as those blooms aged, they took on more of a lime coloration. 
So these are definitely past their prime at this point. But again, we're leaving the flowers here because even though they're past their prime, they still add a, add a lot of interest and texture into the garden. Another hydrangea that's part of the arborescence family is the mini mauvette hydrangeas, which we have here. And these two, again, end of June, beginning of July, is when they were blooming. These are a pink hydrangea when they're in their prime. You can see actually it did send off one little rebloom there with a beautiful pink flower. Uh, but even the spent blooms here have a little bit more of a dusty rose hue to them where the limettas were more lime green. So these two, even though they are done, they still add that little pop of color. The mini mauvette hydrangeas, they get about three, two to three foot tall and two to three foot wide when they're mature. Um, you can see one is just a little bit taller than the other two. And I'm not sure if that has to do with maybe how much water that particular one is getting, that it's just getting a little bit more water and therefore is just a little bit more happier in this garden space. Smooth or arborescent hydrangeas bloom off of the new growth. So if these get trimmed in the fall or in the spring, you don't need to worry about sacrificing your blooms. They do bloom off of that new growth. So they're another very reliable hydrangea variety. Limelight is of course one of the most tried and true varieties of hydrangeas. And I think, I think, I could be wrong here, but I think limelight was one of the first in the proven winners color choice shrub um, introductions. This particular limelight, we have it in a tree form or what's also called a standard. This plant was actually trimmed back from the top of its stem uh, to where it had its uh, canopy, was trimmed back to about a two foot canopy last fall. And you can see the plant has definitely put on new growth this year, has created a brand new large canopy that's about four to five foot tall, each of the stems here on this plant are. Uh, by trimming this back last fall though, what that did is it created some pretty strong stems and extra large blooms this year. If we, cho if we choose to not trim this this fall or just trim a little bit off, um, we'll have smaller flowers, but a lot more of them. We did have a pretty significant uh, windstorm just the other day. So although these are very strong, sturdy stems, it did uh, affect here a couple of them. And I think partly that's because these flower heads are just so huge right now that there's a lot of weight. So when the wind and the rain caught it, it kind of took them down. This is not typical of this plant. So don't worry, you know, that your plant's gonna flop like this. This is definitely not typical, but it did happen because there's not a lot of branching on this plant right now. They're just really long stems. And yeah, like I said, the wind just kind of took them. Heading out to the butterfly garden, we've got two different varieties of hydrangeas out here. We have two more of the bobo hydrangeas, and we also have a firelight hydrangea. So for those of you who have followed me on YouTube for quite some time, you know that last fall I did a series of how to trim your hydrangea videos, and we went drastic with trimming. We wanted to show you that you don't have to be afraid to trim your plants. They will come back and they will look gorgeous. So these bobo hydrangeas are probably about five foot tall right now, which the height on the tag is gonna tell you more like around three to four. Uh, but in our experience, these plants do get up to about five foot tall. And I should also say these are very mature plants. They've been in this garden now for, oh, 10, 12 years at least. So they are very mature specimens. But this particular plant, we had it trimmed down to about 18, maybe, I would say about 18 inches last fall. We cut off any dead twigs or anything out of the plant. And we're, what remained was just a couple good strong um, stems on it. Well, you can see by us trimming this plant back to almost hard nothing, it has flourished and has come back just as beautiful as if it hadn't been trimmed. Again, this was done in the fall. We could also trim it in the spring because these blooms bloom off of the new growth. And let's go in and take a closer look here at the beautiful bobo hydrangea blooms. This plant will take on some pink coloration as these flowers to continue to mature, uh, but you can see they're just starting to open up in really rich, clean white flowers. Here's another bobo. 
Again, beautiful structure and habit to this plant. Nice flowers, big flowers. And you'll certainly find when you do trim your hydrangeas back, especially when you do a drastic trim on them, they are going to really reward you with extra large blooms that next season. One of my favorite large blooming, larger plants of hydrangeas in my garden here is the Firelight Hydrangea. This one here is just, I think, the most vibrant of colors. So it starts off with beautiful, large white blooms. And as those, those blooms transition, they transition to, right now they're at a nice pink and they're gonna continue to transition to magenta. So this plant will eventually be filled with huge magenta blooms. This particular hydrangea does have the nice full flowers on it. Unlike the quick fires we were seeing earlier, these have the nice cone shaped flowers on them. We just released a bunch of monarch butterflies out in the garden. And one thing we found is these monarchs have been loving the hydrangeas. I have cone flowers for them to go to, milkweed, all different kinds of plants, but they have been really drawn to, for some reason, all of the hydrangeas. Firelight is about six foot tall or so by about six to seven foot wide. And this is another variety. This is a hardy hydrangea variety. This is another one that got trimmed back to about 24 inches last fall. So we definitely took this plant down low and we knew it would come back and be nice and full. But by doing that, it just, I think it creates just a nicer, cleaner plant. Um, and by cleaner, I mean, sometimes you have to cut out some of the dead branches on shrubs as they start to get older. And it's also nice to just kind of dial them back a little bit. To be honest, I did not think that this hydrangea would be this tall this season. I thought it would take some time for it to get back up to its full size state, but that definitely did not happen. This, once it started to put on its growth, it put it on fast and furious and got right back to where it was last fall in the garden. Uh, so like, like I said, I was surprised. I thought it might have been about a four foot shrub this year, but it's up there to about that six foot range and is simply sensationally beautiful. We have a few more hydrangeas to talk about before this video will be finished. And we're gonna head to the back of this garden there. And what we have in the back there, those are limelight hydrangeas. Basically those hydrangeas, we planted them, kind of wanted to create a barrier between our, the edge of our yard and our neighbors. Um, there tends to be a lot of weeds beyond that point. So we thought if we planted some hydrangeas, it might keep the weeds at bay and sort of out of our garden. Um, I can't say if it helped or didn't, but one thing I can say is it definitely creates a very vibrant splash of color back in the garden. The nice thing with white too is, and I've said this many times before, white is so romantic and so beautiful at night. We just love how the white flowers in the garden just glow in the night. We don't do anything to these shrubs back here. Um, we just kind of let them go and do their thing. We don't deadhead them, we don't trim them. We're just kind of letting them go natural. And you can see they're quite large. There's about three of them or so back there and they're doing just what we intended for them to do. Create a nice barrier and splash of color in the garden. We have an uh, incredible hydrangea here. You can see there is one new bloom, or actually there's a couple new blooms there, which are the beautiful bright white extra large blooms. This bloomed the end of July, beginning of August as well. So you're seeing a lot of the spent blooms here on this plant. Incredible is a smooth hydrangea or arborescent hydrangea, one that blooms off of the new growth. So very reliable. You don't need to worry about when you trim, it's going to bloom for you. I'm sure you're seeing a pattern here with a lot of the hydrangeas in my garden. Most of them all bloom off of the new growth because I am the last person that wants to have to worry about when to trim, how to trim, and is my plant gonna bloom again next year? So beautiful, incredible hydrangea. Here's another specimen of Bobo. And here's the interesting thing. This Bobo hydrangea, always tends to be just a little bit smaller and more of what I would think the typical bobo hydrangea size should be. This one's only about three foot tall by three foot wide and consistently stays that height. So this one too last fall got trimmed back to about 18 inches or so and now as it's reblooming it's only gone to about that three and a half foot height. 
So a lot of inconsistencies with the hydrangea bobo in the garden. And there's a lot of factors that could be um, the result. It could be the amount of water they're getting, the amount of sun they're getting, and it can even be the soil they're in. Some soils may be richer and just make the plants happier, where other soils may tend to be a little bit drier and make the, the plant work just a little bit harder. Uh, but really a beautiful, beautiful plant, and I just I love it in the garden. Another plant we have is the Invincible Spirit hydrangea, a smooth hydrangea or arborescence. The Invincible series of hydrangeas are reblooming hydrangeas. You can see all of the beautiful pink blooms. That is the color of this plant. And the blooms that are blooming pink right now are all part of the reblooming cycle. We could have come through and trimmed off some of these old spent blooms. But again, they add a little interest and texture out here in the garden, even though they are past the prime. Isn't that a beautiful color, that invincible spirit? And as we head to the last hydrangea in this video, it is going to be another limelight hydrangea, which is and has been in our garden the longest of any plant. Well, I shouldn't say any plant. This wine and roses wajilla has been in here for forever as well. Um, but the wine and roses wajilla, along with this limelight, these were two of the first plants that were planted in this landscape when we put it together nearly 20 years ago. This limelight hydrangea has been trimmed back to about two foot about every three to five years or so. When we first did it, it was a terrifying thing to do. Like I, I just couldn't imagine taking a plant that's eight foot tall and trimming it down to two foot. I thought for sure it was going to be um, a death sentence for the plant, but certainly as you can see, that is not the case. So I had predicted last fall when we did the video trimming this hydrangea back that we were going to be seeing not as many flowers this year, but the flowers that we were going to see were going to be extra large. And I would have to say that prediction did come true. So by trimming the plant back, we trimmed a lot of branching off of it and now it has just really long stems and at the end of each of the long stems it has a really big bloom so let's go in and take a closer look so all of the energy here's my hand on it okay so back it up a little bit so there's my hand on it i would say this hydrangea bloom is at least 12 inches long and probably six to eight inches wide now if we go in and look we can see it's not really one bloom it's a cluster of many. So I'm going to kind of probably ruin this a little bit, but so there's a bloom. There's a bloom. There's a bloom. Now this is pretty much one bloom, but what it did is it sent all of the blooms to the tip of the plant to create just one giant flower. Next year, we'll just do our, this fall. We'll do just a light trim on this plant, which will create more branching. And then next year, what we're going to see is a little bit smaller bloom size and more of them. So I guess the moral of this story is not only just to show you all of the beautiful hydrangeas in the garden. I also did want to kind of just touch on it's okay to trim because a lot of people are scared. They have a plant. They don't necessarily like it because it's too tall. Maybe its shape isn't great and they don't know what to do about it. The to do is trim it back and trim it back hard if you need to. Worst case scenario, it dies, but if it's a plant you're not liking anyways, it's not bringing you joy. Best case scenario is you trim it back and it flushes out beautifully and it brings you joy. I do also wanna say, I had talked earlier about a couple hydrangeas that did not make the best cut flowers. Limelight is an excellent cut flower. Uh, the flowers on each of these big flower heads our, the florets on each of these flower heads are very large, so this one does dry beautifully. Um, along with firelight that we saw earlier in the video, that one too makes an excellent cut flower. Thanks for watching. If you're new to our station, you can check out all of these beautiful plants online at GardenCrossings.com or if you're local to Zeeland, Michigan, stop into our retail garden center where our team can show you all of the beautiful plants that we talked about in today's video. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching. I'm Heidi from Garden Crossings.